Okay. So first thing is uh, you have to talk about the polynomial. So if I write this polynomial like this. A simpler algebraic expression a0 plus a1x plus a2x square plus a3x cube dot 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 a n x to the power n. Okay. If you read my PDF carefully, I am saying that a0, a1, a2, a3 dot 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 a n. They are all real numbers. They are all real numbers. Yeah. They can be, if they are not real, if they are not real, then it means it's imaginary. Mm. Okay, and A1, A2, N can be imaginary. But right now in our syllabus, we don't deal with imaginary numbers. So the numbers has to be real. And the imaginary number can also be known as, called as complex numbers. Okay. We will get some chance to study what is complex number also in this syllabus. But right now, we are going to focus only on real numbers. Okay? And okay. these A0, A1, A2, A3, A, they are known as coefficients of this x. This x mm -hmm. is a variable. This x is a variable whose values can vary. If I if I say this is an algebraic expression, a0 plus a1x plus a2x square plus a n x to power n, you can you have the fixed values of a0, a1, a2, a3, a n. You can put different values of x and you will obtain different values of these expressions. Okay? Yes. Now, highest power n of x, highest power is known as degree of the polynomial. Degree is the highest power, and remember, it has to be a whole number. It cannot be a fraction. It cannot be a uh, irrational number. And when I say this polynomial p x, this expression is equal to zero, then this expression is known as polynomial equation. Yes. So we have two things. One is we have an expression, and when you equate this to zero, then this is known as polynomial. This is known as a polynomial equation. And if for a particular value of x you are trying different values, if for x you alpha, if this p of alpha is equal to zero, then this alpha is known as root of the equation, or we call it as zero of the equation. Yes, sir. For example, if I take a simple equation, x square minus 5x plus 6 is equal to 0. Mm -hmm. This is a, a equation whose a2 is equal to 1, a1 is equal to minus 5, and a0 is equal to 6. If you compare this equation with our general polynomial equation, here a2 is 1, this is 1 here. This is minus right. 5 here and this is 6. Okay. Mm -hmm. If I put so x square minus 5x plus 6 is equal to 0. If I put x equal to 2, and if this mm -hmm. is polynomial p of x, then what is p of 2 equal to? Put x equal to 2, 2 square minus 5 into 2 plus 6. This is 4 minus 10 plus 6, and this comes out to be 0. Mm -hmm. So we can say that 2 is the root of this equation or the 0 of this equation or the 0 of the polynomial. If I yes, put x is equal to 1, then p of 1 is equal to 1 minus 5 plus 6, which is equal to mm -hmm. 7 minus 5, which is equal to 2, which is not mm -hmm. equal to 0. That means 1 is not the root of this equation. 1 is not the yes. zero of this equation, okay? Hmm. Another way is what we can do is, uh, let's do is, let's put x 
3 is equal to 3. That means P of 3 is equal to P square minus 5 multiplied by 3 plus 6, which is equal to 9 minus 15. Minus 15 plus 6 is equal to 0. Mm. That means 3 is also the root of the equation or the 0 of the equation. So, yes, what is the root of the equation or 0 of the equation? Yes, sir. Please quickly browse through this document and see that uh, we understand each and every part. So, you understand what is the real polynomial? You understand what is the yes. root of the polynomial? You yes, sir. What are the roots of an equation? Okay? Yes. We are taking a simple example. So, x squared minus 5x plus 6 is equal to 0. Hmm. Now, I can do, I can write this equation as x minus 2 multiplied by x minus 3. This is equal to 0. Then, x minus 2 and x minus 3 are the factorization of this equation. So this is known as factorization of polynomial. Yes. When polynomial, what happens is when we write the factor, the degree of each factor will be less than the degree of this polynomial. Here you see the degree of this factor is 1, the degree of this factor is also 1, which is less than 2. The, the degree of the factor will be less than the degree of the polynomial. Okay? Yes, sir. Then comes this division algorithm for polynomial. And I am rushing, I am going with the speed so that uh, if it's just a revision for you, if you are yes, sir, yes. you can always stop me in the middle, okay? Yes, sir, yes, sir. Okay. So, uh, division algorithm for polynomial. You know the division of polynomial, right? Yes, sir. X square minus 5x plus 6. I am taking only one single equation every time. If I divide this by x minus 2, I multiply x square minus 2x. You subtract, you get minus 3x. Then you bring out plus 6. Then it's minus 3, so it will be minus 3x plus 6. You subtract, so this is 0. So you can say that, okay, so here it's simply this. This is dividend, this is divisor, this is quotient, but the remainder is 0 in this, in this particular case, okay? Every time, let's say if I divide 7 by 5, the remainder is 2. What I can do is I can write 7 is equal to 5 multiplied by 1 plus 2. Similarly, if there is a polynomial equation P of x, if I divide by, uh, let's say by G of x, and the quotient is Q of x, and the remainder is R of x, then we, like, like the division algorithm for the number system, we can write P of x is G of x multiplied by Q of x plus R of x. You know yes, this? Sir. Or do you want me to yes. go into the details of this division algorithm? No, no, sir. I know this. I know this. Okay. Remember, the degree of the remainder has to be less than the degree of the quotient. Right? Mm. Till this 2 is less than 5, we keep on dividing, right? Yes, sir. Should I explain in detail or should I move forward? Yes, sir. You can move forward. Okay, fine. Then there is another thing. It's a synthetic division. Synthetic yes, sir. division gives me a direct way to write the coefficients of quotient of x. Mm. Okay. I don't have to uh, do the actual division to find out the quotient of x. Okay. So... Uh, if your polynomial a n x super n plus a n minus 1 x super n minus 1 dot 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 a 1 x plus a naught if I divide it by x minus a 
remember this is a linear equation my divisor is always a linear equation then the question can always be written as p n minus 1 x per n minus 1 it will be the question will be always of the degree n minus 1 remember plus b n minus 2 x to power n minus 2 Plus b n minus three x per n minus three dot 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 b zero. If I want to write this value, what is b n minus one, b n minus two, b n minus three, b not? I can simply say b n minus one is equal to a n. I can say b n minus two is equal to a n minus one plus this a. Multiplied by b n minus one. So can you explain this part again? Pardon? Can you explain this part again? Okay. So let's do some extra division and see how it will work. Let me write some random equation. X q minus three x squared plus two x plus five. And let me divide it by x minus one. Hmm. So this is x square. This is x cube. Subtracted zero. We bring out this minus, uh, and this is minus x square. So what we get here is two minus two minus two x square, and then we bring out plus two x. So it will be minus two x. So it will be minus two x square plus two x. Subtracted. Then you bring out plus five. So what is this? I can write x cube minus three x square plus two x plus five is equal to x minus one into x square minus two x plus, plus five. This is our remainder. Yes, sir. And this is my this is my quotient, right? Q of x. Yes. Hmm. I said that the quotient will have a degree less than the quotient of our dividend. So the hmm. degree here is x square, which is one less than three. So what I said it will be b n minus one x per n minus one plus b n minus two x per n minus two dot 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 b not. So what I hmm. see here it is. One into x square minus two into x plus zero. Ah, oh, yes. Okay. What you see here, mm -hmm. and in the synthetic division, what I am saying is, uh, b n minus one is simply equal to a n. What mm -hmm. is the coefficient of x cube here? In this, coefficient of x cube is one. Yes, sir. It is one here, right? Mm. So the b n minus one into a n is simply one. Mm. Now, what is b n minus two? Here it is minus. minus two. What I am saying is it is a n minus one. That is one. Mm -hmm. Sorry. A n minus one. A n minus one is here minus three. Hmm. So minus three. Hmm. Plus p multiplied by b n minus one. P is one multiplied by b n minus one is one. So this gives you minus two. Okay. Okay. Hmm. What the last will be b zero, b zero will be a one plus t times b one. Okay, so now you see what is a one. This is a three, this is a two, and this is a one. So a one is two. Hmm. Plus one into what is b one? This is our b one. B into b three minus two is b one, which is minus two. Hmm. Minus two, which is zero. 
yes. zero is coming out to be zero. So you see here, this is zero. Hmm. Does it make sense? Yes, sir. So uh, now what you can do is you can simply remember this formula. Hmm. Okay. Yes, sir. You need further explanation or should we move forward? Uh, so we can move forward. Okay. So if you have any doubt, you can ask me again. What you can do is you can practice two or three questions. You do by the long algorithm, division algorithm, you do the actual division. You find out all the questions and then you follow the short trick. This, this, this short trick is known as synthetic division. You follow the short trick and then try to see if you get the answer. Okay, sir. Mm. Then there comes a the remainder term. So if I divide P of X by polynomial X minus C, then the remainder R of X is simply P of C. If I'm dividing this by linear equation, then just substitute C here in the polynomial, that will be the remainder, P of C. Okay, for example, if I say x u minus 5x plus 6, if I divide it by x minus 1, what is the remainder? So just put x into 1 here. So 1 q minus 5 into 1 plus 6. So 1 minus 5 plus 6 into 2. So the remainder will be 2. That's all. Two. Let us yes. say this x square, x q minus x square. Plus, so it will be x square minus 5x. Put it as plus x. So x square minus x. Subtract it. So 6x. Sorry. Oh, uh, for minus 4x. Minus 4x. Minus 4x plus 6. I think something is going wrong. So minus so it's minus four x squared. Oh, up. Um so uh, on like when you do x minus one into x squared, it's x cube minus x squared, uh, x squared. It'll be plus. Yeah, so it'll become uh it'll become minus four x squared, right? No, that's right, no? Yeah, that's Oh, okay. There is no... Okay, sorry, sorry. I thought uh, it was 5x squared. Oh. Huh, yeah, this is okay. correct. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So I don't have to do the complete division to find the remainder. Yes, sir. I yes, just sir. have to put the value of x, x minus c is equal to 0. So x is equal to c. And put in this in expression. The value of x is that you get the remainder. Okay? Yeah. Yes, sir. So this comes to this that... If P of C is 0, then X minus C is the factor of this expression. If P of yes, C is 0, then X minus C is factor of P of X. Or if X minus C is a factor of P of X, then P of C is 0, vice versa. Yes. Both the things are vice versa. If P of C is 0, then X minus C is the factor of the polynomial. Mm. And if x minus c is the factor of the polynomial, then p of c will be yes. yes. As p of c is the remainder of the polynomial when you divide it by x minus c. Hmm. Clear? Yes, sir. Now comes very, very important theorem, rational zero theorem, which will be helpful for you in finding out integral solution of the equation. Okay? Okay. So right now I'm going to just uh, write down what this equation, this uh, rational zero mm -hmm. theorem is, and then I will give you some homework, and you try mm -hmm. those questions to figure out what is this rational zero theorem. Okay. It says that let's say we have a polynomial 
defined as p of x is equal to a n x per n plus a n minus one x per n minus one dot 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 like same thing a one x plus a no. Okay. If I say just a second. Yep, this is a polynomial, okay? And if I say uh, p by q is the root of this equation, or if I say x minus p by q is the factor of this polynomial, hmm. p by q is both it's a uh, rational number, right? Hmm. It's a rational number, hmm. but p and q are uh, co-prime to each other. So if, if if I want to say it's two by four, then I have to convert it into one by two, the lowest fraction. Mm -hmm. I cannot take it as two by four. I have to make it one by two. Yes. Sir. So if x minus p by q is the factor with p and q relate p and q relatively prime to each other or they are co-prime, then p is the divisor of the constant a naught, and q is the divisor of the leading coefficient a n. Mm -hmm. This a n is always known as leading coefficient. P is the divisor of a naught, or P is the factor of a naught, and Q is the divisor of a n, or Q is the factor of a n. Okay. Yes. This is very very important for us. This mm -hmm. helps us to figure out how many uh, how many zeros of this polynomial equation will be actually integer. How many zeros of this equation will be actually integer? I'll give you some homework. Mm -hmm. Okay. Hmm. And then I'll ask you to use this theorem to solve the question. It will be difficult for you to solve in the first instance, but then tomorrow I'll guide you to solve these questions. Okay? Yes. Sir. So right now, what I'm simply saying is, you have to just memorize it. Hmm. If x minus p by q, where p by q is a fraction, hmm. and p and q are co-prime or relatively prime. If x minus p by q is the factor of this equation, then p is the divisor of a naught, or p is the factor of a naught, and q is the factor of a n. That is the leading coefficient. Okay, and okay. this will help you to find out the factors of the equation with slight ease, and you will be able to eliminate the possibility. Hmm. Then comes. Fundamental theorem of algebra. Mm. If p of x is a polynomial of degree n greater than equal to one with real or complex coefficient, okay. Remember, for us, a n x per n plus a n minus one x per n minus one dot 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 a one x plus a naught a zero a one a two a three a n They are all real numbers. Mm. They are all real numbers for our syllabus, but these numbers can be complex. In higher algebra, a zero, a one, a two, a three, n can be imaginary. Mm. Okay, mm. Yeah, or they can be complex numbers. You don't know what is complex numbers. You know what is complex numbers? Like imaginary numbers only. Ah, you know what is that? Which is not, which doesn't fall under rational or irrational numbers. Okay, so but know, I don't know the examples of them. So you don't know the examples. So forget about it. But for us, mm. we'll be on, we'll on, we will only dealing with real numbers, but they can be mm. complex numbers. So the, mm. so the 
the fundamental theorem of algebra says that a0 a1 a2 a3 n can be real or complex whatever for us it is a mm. complex number real number then there exists a complex number alpha such that p of alpha is equal to zero for us mm. we'll, for us this alpha will be real number we will not mm. go into those alphas which are complex okay sir so for us we will not we will not be given the problem where alpha is a complex number but alpha mm. can be a complex number okay mm. Hmm. Because uh, it's an equation of degree n. Like say it was a quadratic equation x square minus five x plus six in zero. In terms of linear factor, how many did we do? X minus two into x minus three zero zero. Hmm. Yeah. This is a for a quadratic equation we get two factors. Hmm. It's a cubic equation. Three. So let's say this is a cubic equation. Which has mm -hmm. factors x minus one, x minus two, x minus three. If you simplify it, you will find this will be x cube, x square minus one, minus two, minus three, minus six x square, uh, minus six, and some coefficient of x and minus seven is zero. So this is a cubic mm -hmm. equation. Okay, I I not completely mm -hmm. solved it. There is something will come in this bracket also. But this is a cubic equation, and we have three factors of this. Mm. And it's a real. But even if it's a complex, we'll always get three factors of the form a into x minus alpha one, x minus alpha two, x mm. minus alpha three dot dot dot, x minus alpha n multiplied by three, where mm. alpha one, alpha two, alpha n. Are the roots of this equation, and mm. assume they are complex. They can be real also, real or complex, whatever. For us, this will always be real, and these alpha one, alpha two, alpha three, alpha n will be real, and we'll get the n roots of this equation. Okay. Yes, sir. There are chances. Where some of the roots are real and some of the roots are complex, mm. we will deal with those situations also. Mm. We will deal with those situations also. After I finish the quadratic equation, I will expose mm. you to the complex number. I'll okay. Small portion of the complex number, but that will be helpful to us. Okay. Okay. So now let's move to the graphical representation of this. Polynomial. You know how to draw the graph? Uh, the the um Cartesian plane. No? So you can, if a graph ever is given to you, you can draw this graph. Hmm. This is my y-axis, and this is my x-axis. And I, if I ask you to draw the graph y is equal to x, you just simply uh. put the value of x one, two, three, four. Can you? Yeah, yes, I know. Yes, it's a simple straight line, right? Hmm. Yes. Sir. If I ask y is equal to x square, hmm. then it will be a simple parabola like this. Okay. Hmm. So as the n increases, the graph becomes steeper or draws slower, closer to the y-axis. So if I say y is equal to x cube. Hmm. Then the graph will be like this. For so if you compare this, this is y is equal to x cube, and this is y is equal to x square. So mm -hmm. as your n is increasing, it's becoming more and more steep. The it, it's mm -hmm. the climbing of the slope is becoming more and more steep. So if mm -hmm. x is increasing like this, then x square is increasing like this, then x cube is increasing like this. Mm -hmm. And x power four is increasing like this. Mm -hmm. X power five is increasing like this. It, it is a curve. It's not a straight line. Okay, these are not curves. Can you mm -hmm. are you able to grasp it? That when the yes, power n, that when the power n is increasing, the curve is getting more and more steep. That mm -hmm. is the mountain. The uphill is becoming more and more vertical. Mm -hmm. You understand that? Yes. So, so with increasing of uh, uh, power, increase in steep. With increasing this power n. Huh, huh. Equal to x power n. Huh. So one, it was one. Hmm. Then it was two. 
then it is three, then it is four. So it is becoming more and more steep. The mm. slope is becoming more and more steep. And as the mm. power decreases, the slope becomes gentle. Mm. Is it okay? Yes, sir. Okay. If n is odd, the graph lies in the first and the third quadrant. Like you see, this is my value x2 graph. It is mm. lying in the first quadrant and the third quadrant. You know the mm. quadrant? Oh, yes, yeah, so first, second, third. First, this is second, this is third, this is fourth. Okay, so for even for y is x square, y is x power 4, y is x power 6, the graph always lies in the first and the second quadrant. Because mm -hmm. when the power of x is even, minus 1 power, when it is even, will always be positive. Mm -hmm. So your y will never become negative, y will always mm -hmm. become positive. So the graph will always lie in the first quadrant and second quadrant. Mm. But if the n is odd, like 3, then the graph will go into the third quadrant. Then it will go into the first quadrant and third quadrant. Mm. You understand this? Yes, yeah, so, so, so if it's first and third quadrant, like it's also for complex numbers. They'll go to first and third quadrant. For complex numbers, it'll be first and third quadrant. No, 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 no. Uh, no, 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 no. Complex number is not represented on this graph. This is oh, a, achha, okay. the x axis and the x values and the y values are real. This is 1, hmm. 2, 3, 4, minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, minus 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, minus 4. So we don't have any okay. complex numbers on this graph. Okay, okay. Yeah, got it. Then it's very different. Hmm. Yes. And if it's y is x per n, if I say it's y is minus x per n, what we do is we get the reflection of y x per n in in the x axis. That is like a mirror image. Mm. Like a mirror image. Mirror. So I say this is y is equal to x square. Mm. And if the mirror image is like this, I am not able to draw the mirror image. But let's say this is a mirror image, then this is y equal to minus x square. Okay. Yes. So if I draw this graph, this is y is x cube. Hmm. Then y equals minus x cube. Y is equal to no no sorry 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 sorry. Ah, okay. This is y is equal to minus x cube. Oh. It, it, uh, the mirror is this x axis, remember. The mirror is the x axis. The reflection is in the x axis. Hmm. Okay, this is, I think, what has been taught to you till now in LN. Yes. Yes. In the sir. document is something like uh, uh, discrete, discrete rule of science, but I'll skip this right now. Then I'll teach you hmm. quadratic equations. I'll come to this part. Okay. And uh, some identities which are given below. Mm. So below, there are some identities which are given. X plus Y whole square, X minus Y whole square, X square minus Y square, X plus Y plus Z whole square. Have you gone through all these identities? Yes, sir. I know. We did this in school also. Identity. All these identities? Yes, sir. Okay. So one important identity which I have given here is a to power 4 plus 4 times b to power 4. Do you know this identity? a square plus twice b square plus twice ab multiplied by a square plus twice b square minus twice ab. This is very important identity. Lots of questions have come from this identity in the maths Olympiad. Hmm. Have you done this identity? No, sir. Okay. Uh, sir, I didn't do this one and then the uh, below one I didn't do the fourth, fifth, and sixth one. Okay, so this class will be over in next one minute. So, uh, huh. I'm giving you this homework. Can yeah. you try to solve this? This is a so homework. What? And I will give you some homework tonight. I'll send you a PDF. You just hmm. try to work on this identity. And I'll explain you this identity tomorrow. Hmm. 
So what's so what's the homework? So what do I have to do? Pardon? So what's the homework? What do I have to do? This identity you have to prove it. How is this result is coming? Okay. Okay, sir. Okay. Hmm. Because it it makes a lot of sense in following a lot of problems. Hmm. Uh, this is the identity, rest of all identities. They are known to everyone. Hmm. So generally her books are available. Okay. Hmm. And there are some useful extract, extracted from above identities. Remember those things. Okay. Hmm. 